Welkom. Um, actually, it's very rare that we have visitors here because of the tight security. It's, it's his birthday, and uh, his uh, grandfather sent him a birthday present, which uh, did not get delivered. It was ordered online. And now they actually think it's stuck somewhere on the internet. That, that is not possible. Did Martin tell you how the internet works? He tried to explain me in a roundabout way, but... He said our ISPs connect right here in the Amsterdam Internet Exchange. Um, this is it, right? This is only one of the Amsterdam Internet Exchange locations. We're going to seven now around Amsterdam. Oh, now we will never find the present of my grandson. No. Wouldn't it be easier to just have everything in one place? There's no one data center that can hold all the equipment. And you would not want to do that anyway, because the data centers are commercial operations. They compete with each other, and they are separate from M6. Nobody wants a single point of failure. And there's the history of M6. Look! Whoa. If you look from Amsterdam from above, you can see how the city grew. First with the waterways as transportation arteries, later the roads for the trucks and the cars, and now the digital infrastructure is just as important. M6 became informally in 1994, with connections between a few academic organizations, a few ISPs, and a line to CERN. By the middle of the 90s, there were many ISPs who wanted to exchange data, and M6 was officially created. We quickly became one of the largest internet exchanges in the world, and we are still growing. We go where the traffic is. But our presence also increases the attractiveness of being in one of these data centers. Uh, can I eat in here? I'm afraid not, George, but uh, I'll be back in a little while. Ian, may I? Go work on your server, Martin. I'll take care of your friends. Maybe we can find our present. Thanks. What's all this? Here we monitor the security of the data center. Here you have the backup generator. And here these large red bottles contain argonite gas for the automatic fire suppression system. When a fire is detected, the data center is flooded with argonite gas and the fire is extinguished without damaging the equipment. I think it would be cool to work there. Everybody would depend on you to keep the internet working. With all those backup generators, the power would never go out. I felt really safe, like nothing could go wrong. Yet we were here because something had indeed gone wrong. So, tell me more about your problem. You two are at different ISPs, right? Right. Netnord and LOL. Ah, those are two M6 members and I believe they peer here. Peering? What is that? Peering is when two internet providers want to exchange traffic with each other. The easiest way to do that is at an internet exchange, like M6. We do that here and at six other locations around Amsterdam. Martin probably used a roundabout analogy, right? In principle, it's similar, but because we have so many peers and so much traffic and it has to be absolutely reliable that we build a roundabout that cannot exist in the physical world. Imagine a roundabout with 300 exits and four layers. Well, that's what we built at M6. Whoa. I will explain that it's an attractive place for international operators to peer to. With one connection, any network operator can exchange internet traffic with over 300 others, if they want to. AMZIX just makes it easy to peer, but the agreements to peer are between the individual operators. What if you have a traffic jam, like in a rush hour? Our job is to provision enough capacity so jams can't form. Here, let me show you how it works. For Grandpa, Arya knew just how to explain the invisible world of data with real physical examples. All these roads are like data links from various network operators headed towards M6. They may come from some place close or halfway around the world. We have big packets and small packets. Here's Martin's fan. It's like an IP packet from NetNord heading to LOL. All these roads converge into our core switch, which is like the roundabout. But they cannot change lanes, they are separate links, they are separate cables. Every physical connection, like these roads, can carry up to 10 gigabits of traffic. When ISPs need more, they can buy several of these entrances and exits, which we call ports. We work closely together with our vendors to increase these speeds, and we will provide them to our members once they are technically available and reliable. How do I connect to, say, Australia or any other net network that doesn't appear here? Well, that's 
called Transit. We have many of the big international carriers connected to M62. Through them you can reach the entire internet and therefore we call them tier 1 providers. They peer here but they also sell something called IP Transit. Unlike peering that's not settlement free, it costs money. So smaller ISPs would like to peer with as many other ISPs as possible to lower their transit costs. So it seemed like the more good peers M6 had, the more who wanted to join. I guess that's how it grew over the years. Now 70% of their members are from outside of the Netherlands. Grandpa wanted to know more. I may be old, but I know that if you want to make connection between 300 points, you need nearly 45,000 cables. You must own your own copper mine. <laughs> You're still thinking about these connections like old telephone lines. Yes. But we use the efficiency of packet switching uh -huh. to connect between oh, networks. Uh -huh. And we don't use copper cables much more anyway. Most of our members connect using fiber optic cables. We were the first internet exchange in the world to use optical switches too. If everything passes through the core switch, then that's where my present must be. But then that's deep inside the most secure part of Amzix, where I'm sure they don't allow kids to go. So I asked Aria to contact the lady working there that I could see on the security monitor. Uh, this is Graham, can you hear me? And this is the M6 core switch. Uh, uh, this is, Graham. This is the largest switch that is currently available. Kara, uh, this is Arian, can you hear me? Yes, Arian, uh, yes, Arian, I can hear you. I have two guests here yeah. who would like to know more about the M6 yeah, core. Well, I can explain a little bit, but it's very noisy out here. What we see here is the M6 core switch. And this is where all the data comes together that we collect from the member networks. It comes all through the uh, edge switch that we have just seen, through the photonic switches, um, using the photonic switches to the core of the network. Um, this is an uh, MLX32 switch, capable of handling uh, about a terabit of traffic. And um, it now connects uh, over 300 networks together. We use these photonic cross connects to provide redundancy in the network and we have these core switches that connect the edge locations that we have. Doesn't it cost a lot of energy? If you think about it in terms of energy per data transmitted, M6 is quite efficient. Most of the power is consumed by the millions of personal computers and the thousands of servers in the data centers. I don't understand the optical switches. What is the difference between an optical switch and a core switch? For reliability and scalability, we now use four core switches. Think about it as the roundabout, but then stack four high. Um, but how to direct the traffic to the right core switch? Well, that's what we use the photonic switches for. I learned that optical switches don't switch packets between networks. That's what the core switches do. The optical switches actually shunt whole physical circuits of light. Because light carries all the data at AMSIX, they can quickly change the path that the data takes just by moving tiny mirrors inside the optical switch. Arian said they do that to redistribute the traffic or when they take one of the core switches out of service. I think this explains how AMSIX can be so large and so reliable at the same time. They have to be able to handle changes and failures without customers noticing. They do this with the optical switches. Switch packets between networks. Yeah, it's all very in, uh, interesting what uh, you told me, but it's going all a bit above my head, you know. But in all the gazillion bytes that are passing through your exchange, one very important somehow gets stuck. His birthday present. Well, we don't block or intercept any traffic. So you have to go to your ISP. We did. He said everything is working fine. We, we're hoping you might have a new suggestion. Why don't you tell me a bit more about the birthday present you sent to Torch? I bought some knife. It's his birthday. He did what? Did Okay, George, um, I think I know what's going on. You have your laptop, did you, right? Uh, yeah, right. Like, um, pack, okay, pack, open yeah. it. I'll get something from my office and we'll see. I wasn't sure what was going to happen next, and I don't think Grandpa did either. But I could tell that Arian from Amzix had a hunch. So, can you open your email program? 
Your grandfather may be half right. I'm betting that your present is not stuck in the internet. It's stuck on your computer. Maybe that's a good thing, considering what he sent you. Aha. Uh -huh. This must be it. Open this email. You can try it. So... Is this what your grandfather yes, sent you? Yes! Yes! Uh, it's right here! A gift certificate of five cans of spam! Sent by email! And it's right here in my spam folder! I never thought to look there! Oh, Grandpa, thanks! I know you can go a day without a ham sandwich, even on a camping trip. Happy birthday, George! Here, you can have this. I had it already in my office to remind myself that, unfortunately, a lot of traffic passing the internet is spam these days. But if you are in a hurry, you can uh, still redeem your gift certificate. Happy birthday, George. That's my grandpa. He sure can cause a lot of trouble, but he always means well. And in the end, the spam didn't really matter, because the best birthday present of all was the chance to take a tour of the Amsterdam Internet Exchange and learn how the internet really works.